Here we go. So last episode, we had a nightmare trying to find out where to go. It turns out we were missing a slight pixel that we could go in and it was a doorway to a bathroom where we could get the mask. So we've liberated the first soul and we're about to liberate the second one. Put this, this arms in the sky. So that's a bit creepy. Oh, this looks a lot more demonic than the previous places we've been. So wait there, do we... We already have the mask for the next guy. We've just pulled it off the wall there. We need to find his name. Some sort of a conference room. It is. Right, let's have a look. As well, I think last episode I forgot to tell you another one of my um, my supernatural stories. Well, I don't know if it's supernatural, but it's creepy nonetheless. I'm actually trying to think of which one to tell you, or which ones I've already told you. <laughs> I gotta go. The voting's about to start. You know what they say: if you're early, you're on time. No, I mean right now. I can hear them gathering across the hallway. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know how it went. That voice. That's the guy. Right, that's the guy. Okay, so actually, I, I, this is probably the creepiest story that I know. It didn't happen to me directly like the other ones, but it, it was, it's within the family. And... I, well, I don't know if it's true or not. I, re I couldn't, if, if you, if I had to swear by it in a court of law, if it's true or not, I, I couldn't say. But I've got no reason to doubt it happened. So I've got, I've got two cousins. Um, One's the same age as me. Another one is a couple of years younger. Well, when the, the one that was the same age as me was like, I don't know, like two or three. Like, when, when can you start talking, you know what I mean? I, I'm not sure. But... She used to play in the, the sitting room of my uncle's house. And she always used to talk to herself. Which is normal for kids. Kids that like, kids do talk to themselves, right? But whenever she was asked, who are you talking to? Oh, just the old lady in the corner. And like, me, me uncle just thought it was like, you know what I mean? Help, you, you can have an imaginary friend, that, that's anything. Oh yeah, the, the nice old lady in the corner. Uh, so anyways, she grew out of it. So, so she would have been about maybe four and then my uncle had a my uncle and his my auntie had a, another baby yeah she was she was three so by this time she would have been two and the old eldest would have been four or going on three i didn't know the ages right but anyways pretty much when the youngest was the same age as when the oldest was talking to the old woman she started talking to herself as well and when she was asked who are you talking to? Oh, the nice old lady in the corner. In the same house. It's crazy. They don't live in that house anymore. But that is... Oh, it gives you the shivers just thinking about it. I'll bet the name I'm looking for is here on this page. But which one is it? Let's have a look. Waldemar Jan Anthony Nicholas Ho Halina. Well, it's going to be a man in it. Arthur, Boris, Nicholas, Anthony, Waldemar. It's going to be one of them. Hmm. Number seven. Oh, is this going to be some sort of code? Eight. Oh, wait, then let me just... Check with my nano vision. Well, they all go in order. There it is. I can't believe they sat me across from Boris. I don't care ah. whose nephew he is. He's just a sexist pig for all I care. And late, that's it, as always. Sat me across from Boris. Right, I know which chair that is. So let's have a look. Is Boris numbered on this?
Boris is nine. So that was the last one, wasn't it? Seven, eight, nine. So he was sat over here. This is the chair. Number four. Do we know the name? Nicholas. Nicholas Oskarek. I know the name. Where's my reward? You'll have to look at all the chairs just in case. Uh, hello? I, I know the name. I figured it out with, with my massive brain power. <laughs> Sat me across from Boris, so that's his chair there. Number four, Nicholas. Actually, I've got another. Uh, uh, this one's not so... Uh, well, is it? I've got another story from within the family that's also a bit creepy. But I was actually there for this one. This is probably going to be the last one because all the other stories I've got, I, I don't really put much weight to them because they happen to friends. But... First off, what the fuck am I doing in here, man? I've got the name. I know the name. Oh, what's this? Oh, so I have to click on Boris. Boris. That's the guy he was talking about. Yeah. Seat number nine. Yes, and I've already, I know what's... Oh my god, you have to do this. Oh, you, you can't just, you can't just use your brain on this. You've got to like... This is it. Like, oh. The man I'm looking for, this is where he died. I'm fucking ten steps ahead of the game, the game can't keep up, that's so frustrating. Mate. Mate. Figured it out 10 minutes ago, but it had to run, run about like a dickhead because I didn't click on the paper. Fucking hell. Oh, so no worries, I'm gonna have to go back to the paper, aren't I? I'm gonna have to go back to the paper and click on the name. Oh. That's it. Nicholas. Okay, Nick. Let's get you out of here. Come on, then, big Nick. If I remember how to get back. The shit's gonna kick off here, don't it? Yeah. Where is he? He's outside. Come to me, my pretty. Has he gone? I think he's gone because we tortured and flashed anymore. He's actually gone. What? Oh yeah, I remember where I'm going now. He, he was probably in this room. They just had to hide until he went past. Now. Where am I going? Oh, it's just through here. It's not really that far. Cross this bridge. And then down, maybe? I know what's next to a where the where the actual this is it this is it this is it got him take your face rest. you've earned it Nicholas thank you man you did it Marianne. sent them away 
to a better place, I hope. Hell, anywhere is better than here. Nice, we've got the ball cut. Well, we are going to get the... Will you just let me pick you up already? We need a mirror, don't we? Bada boom, bada bing. Mr. Rickowitz has been unreasonable, uh, to put it mildly. I'm a nurse, not a nanny. I understand that you need someone to keep an eye on her, but I have my hands full as it is. Even putting aside all my other duties, he has poor Mr. Tarowski to take care of. Still, I'll do my best. At least the girl's quite quiet, keeps to herself mostly. Likes talking to her imaginary friends. But I figure it's quite normal for someone who... It's so... How, we've just spoke about little girls speaking to their imaginary friends and what the fuck. That's pretty creepy. Um, sometimes I can hear her playing out full conversations and I swear it sounds like two people talking. She's really gifted. I guess it runs in the family. Hmm. Yes. Nice. Ball cutters, baby. Now we've got access to loads of places because there's a few... Fucking finally. Fucking finally. Time to get back to the day room. I agree. Now the good thing is about getting back to the day room is I haven't got a fucking clue where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the day room? I don't even know. Mate, it's too much shit that's went on. Day room. This place. This is where it started. How have I not been here before? Oh yeah, because I couldn't get through. That's why. I'd never felt darkness like that before. That thing had been there. It was where it made its first kill. Where it tasted death and liked it. My poor, poor Mr. Tarovsky, whatever happened to you? The test came back, no signs of any brain trauma or dementia, and still I look at your sad, empty eyes and I have this awful feeling that there's no one looking back. Don't worry, my love, I'll take care of you no matter what. I'll make sure you're happy as can be. 450 milligrams of venlafaxine, that'll cheer you right up. I thought I heard something behind me. Oh, oh that's nice. Someone fucking perioded all over that bloody wheelchair. You know what's amazing about walking towards the camera? You can't see a fucking thing. Oh, there we go, this is it. Chains, baby. Hmm. So worth it. I love you, bolt cutters. Right, so while we're just exploring this area, yeah, the, the last creepy story that happened to me was I was I don't know how old I was I was a kid probably I don't know five five ish five ish I can remember being an actual human being playing with toys and stuff so I used to stay at my a different auntie and uncle's house this time not the one I've just told you about the the daughter speaking to the nice old lady in the corner this is a different cousin Um, so there's two twins and they're whatever age they, they were older than me and there's a older sister so there's three three like of my cousins on that side of the family and there was my auntie and my uncle but as soon as you right where am i going i'm going downstairs isn't i as soon as you went into their house uh, it was like a, a corridor straight from the front door on the left hand side was the sitting room on the right hand side there was a small toilet so it was just one room really small room with just a toilet and a few shelves in with like i just call it clutter like pictures and memorabilia and little tokens and trinkets and stuff like that um, and funnily enough my auntie on that side of the family she was pretty much into the she loved the supernatural and shit things like that like you, you, you can just tell the type of person can't you that loves that type of shit and she was one of them she always spoke about, and funnily enough I've just this has just come back to us that side of the family the the, the twins and the the eldest sister my cousins 
They um kind of sounds they're like a spy name. Cutters. Bolt cutters. Bond, James Bond. Yeah, they they were all in the horror movies. Horror they movies are the people. Like in a movie you don't use your real name for. They were the people that got me into horror movies, I remember. Every time I used to stop over, they used to make Spy me watch it is. Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. And I was scared at first, but then I grew to love them. And that's, I think, where I get my love of horror movies from. So anyways, back on track. Going through the front door, on the left-hand side, there's a small toilet with loads of trinkets and knickknacks and stuff. And I went in there, and I know it sounds a bit stupid, right? But when I was a kid, I used to like to play with tea sets. Like... Don't ask us what where it came from, but like, like ornaments, like that were cups or plates or anything. It was like I used to, I had a real affinity for them. I don't know why. I just used to like them. And in there, there was a cup with something wrote on it. I don't know what it was, but it was always the wrong way around. So whenever I used to go to the toilet, I always used to like turn it around so I could look at like whatever picture I'd had on the front of it. It was like a you know like a Souvenir, that's the word I'm looking for. It was like a souvenir. Couldn't tell you what it was. But when I went, I, I don't know what, what triggered it, but one day when I, when I came out the toilet and I'd been speaking to the my auntie, she went, Oh, I know you like, I must have told her, Oh, I like the cup in there. And she was like, Oh, have you like, have you used it? Have you turned Have you turned it around or anything? And um, I said, Oh, yeah, I, I like played it. I put it back the way it was though. And she was like, But did you put it back facing the, the wrong way? I was like, No, like, I. I put it back with the picture facing outwards like it should be. She was like, oh, <laughs> the ghost doesn't like it that way. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? The ghost doesn't like it that way. And she went, go back in there, go back in the toilet. Um, so I went back in the toilet and it was facing the wrong way again. Now, don't get me wrong, it could have been a wind up because there was other, like, the sitting room had, like, a, you could walk through their sitting room into the back room and then into the kitchen and back round to the toilet. But because of the speed that had happened, like I don't think anybody else could have been in there and turned it round because they wouldn't have even known that I'd turned it round. But that was pretty fucking creepy, that, like, aye? The ghost doesn't like it facing outwards. What the hell? But yeah, like I say, I don't know. I don't know whether I believe in ghosts or not. I, as an adult, I've never seen anything to suggest that they do exist. But I'm definitely not ruling it out. I just don't believe it now. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of coincidences and I think the biggest factor in supernatural and stuff like that is the brain can do wonderful things. They can make you see things, it can make you do things that like it's madness if you're not feeling right. Can I not go in this mirror? Oh, it's a broken one, isn't it? So hold on, what's the point of... I've come in here. Uh, well, what was the fucking point of that? Oh, there's a hole here, man. Yeah, I'm not too sure, actually. Okay, Maria. Let's see what sadness wanted me to see. Oh, uh, she's all right. I don't think she's all right. She's, she's missing an arm for a start. I'd be sad if I was missing an arm. Whiz. Family time. Holidays in the country. Hmm. I keep saying it in my dreams, the other place, dust and death as far as the eye can see, a feeling of nothingness tearing at my soul, I wake up choking, feeling the dust burning through my lungs, I beg for it to stop, he says there's no help in it, then again, he would say that wouldn't he? Yes he would. Oh we... Oh, I thought it was that guy again. See, like, what type of camera is this? I can't see a fucking thing. Like, mate. Just make it third person.
All right. Here we go. The day room. Come on then, baby. Promise. don't want to see him. What? Why not? What, what do you remember? No. Don't tell them. Well, it, it's don't okay. tell anyone. You don't have to tell me. But you should still come with me so that I can keep you safe. No. No, Marianne. The sadness. No, never again. Why did you... bring me here? It was then I realized there was something she wanted me to see. With my the own eyes. The skin. Cut the skin. So what did Richard do to her? So this begs the question, right? You know, if this woman, the medium, has a physical self and also whatever she's... No matter what she's doing, she has a supernatural self in, like, that other world. Does that mean if this world truly exists, then everybody does? Or is it only the mediums that have another body in the supernatural world? You know what I mean? I mean, this was a good idea the first time. A bit like with the clippers. But like, after the first time, it should just be something automatic because it just takes too long. Richard? Are you there? Big Richard. Oh, hold on. A sheet of music. Well, at least part of it. What's the camera even for? We've had this camera for ages and you can't even do anything with it. Mm. 
Thomas, I've always been stunned by the depth and complexity of his imagination, mesmerised by the surreal dreamscape his mind would weave, the way he described them with every minute detail. It was as if he'd actually witnessed all of it, as if something or someone pulled the veil and allowed him a peek beyond the edges of our reality. An angel, a demon? Is there really a difference? I know it didn't matter to me, as his visions came alive in my canvas. Some would say I used the bo boy to fuel my waning creativity, but how could I not? To let this unique perspective, this bottomless well of inspiration go to waste, that would be an unforgivable sin. Now speaking about that, so what this guy's saying is, he used somebody that could see into the spirit realm for creativity in this realm. And obviously that brings with it a, a wealth of profit. I, I love watching conspiracy theories and things to do with aliens and stuff. But there was something, and funny enough, I can't, when I tried to Google it, recently all the information surrounding it's like gone, I can't find it. And I have found it in the past. There was a guy who apparently came to Earth and he had no... Or he came to Earth, oh, let me rephrase that. There was a guy that had no identity or whatever and he met with presidents of the United States and loads of important people including the author of the Star Trek franchise and he, he told them all of the things or he told them all about their technology, future technology and stuff and then this guy apparently vanished he had no no more record, that was it, that was the only instance of this guy ever being anywhere and that's where the guy from Star Trek how he wrote all about phaser guns and things like that and in different planets and space travel and hyperspace and warp drives and things it all came from that one guy and he wrote books about it and made a profit from it it's crazy isn't it again I reckon I can get in there with a pair of bowl cutters I just cut through the door right this is actually a dead end now Oh no, it's not. Yeah, so again, whether that's true or not, you don't know, because the internet is a powerful tool. Now, how do we activate this again? Yeah, we go. Don't you think he would be better off in a nursing home? What about his family? Richard doesn't have any family. Oh, the poor man. It's like he's somewhere else. We were close once, you know. I mean, not that close, but... All right. I'll take care of him. Hollow like a puppet. Isn't that what Sadness said? Hmm. So Richard's the guy in the wheelchair and Thomas is the guy speaking to the nurse. We'll have a quick look about for any other things and then we'll go and get them. So how many pieces of music with there? How many pieces of music have I got? One more left. P or possibly two. I remember the first time I met him working a simple factory job, still more of a boy than a man. Wide-eyed, constantly looking over his shoulder like a scared animal. His parents had died in the Warsaw Uprising. Of what he'd gone through in the years that followed. He did not want to speak and I never pressed him. But it soon became clear he had one, he had no one else in the world. I could immediately tell that despite his young age he had seen things that no one his age should. I could immediately tell he was special. Bad ones, guilt, humiliation, rage, what, who's... Why can she not touch this fucking thing? So, someone was speaking there, I couldn't hear it, but it was like on the screen. It became a habit of ours, we'd sit down, sketchbook at the ready, and then he'd close his eyes and start talking, describing all the things he saw in his mind's eye. The horror and splendour of worlds beyond our own. What started out as innocent exercise in imagination ultimately became a bottomless well of inspiration. 
my hand wouldn't dare rest, sketching furiously as he described the indescribable. For a while I wondered why he was so eager to share his visions with me. To him, they seemed to be a burden, a source of great pain and distress, but finally I understood. He sought to share them with someone who saw them as a source of beauty rather than madness. We've got to put something in it. Probably the the writing. Not the writing. The music sheet. But I need to fulfill it first. Right, I think we're going to have to go through the, the butterflies. Only problem is I don't have... No, 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 no. Yeah, we do. I bet you we have to fulfill that with the sheet of music. Right, wait there. Let me go through here. Oh no, look. These are the bits of that thing. Is that it? There's nothing here at the minute. I think there will be eventually. Right, let's go back. Maybe this thing will complete that. Oh, we've got to make a face, don't we? Oh, wrong one. Bullshit. Another junction. Maybe it can show me a way out of here. Hmm. But wait there, because look, there's something. Ah, oh, see, like what? Where am I looking? Aha! Taking away. Oh, there's the thing, that's taking all the kids away. Oh, something in here, I can see it. Oh, there's the well. Now we can get through that door. Happy days. The spark's too weak to absorb. Oh. It's like it missing something. It's missing some passion. Just fucking take it. Take the flame. Reminds me of my childhood. Uh, at least the good parts of it. But the bad parts, they're always there, aren't they? You're a very smart girl, Lily. You know that, don't you? You're special. 
Her voice, is that... Sadness? Oh, is that Richard? Or is it Thomas? I don't know. Uh -huh. I got the key! Look, he's got pictures of that sadness. This guy's drawn pictures of sadness, but why? Come on, cut the fucking thing. Why is this woman so crap at cutting this thing? Mate, it, it, it's a razor blade. You just go wapow and it'd be slit down straight away. It's so painful this. I, it, it's excruciating. It feels like someone's slitting me up with a razor blade every time I have to do that fucking stupid sequence. Gather round, children. I want you to meet Lillian. She's going to be joining our painting class. Uh, why can't I play with my friends, Uncle Richard? Your friends? Oh, Lillian, I, I promised your father you would spend some time with the other children. Friends? Huh? But she was the one that could see the ghost, I think. I spent a few years trying to steer him in the right direction, trying to make him see the depth of his potential. He kept refusing, claiming that I was no painter, and that he saw our little get-togethers as therapy, rather than artistic expression. Eventually, I wore him down. He agreed to enter the university, but on the condition that it would be his chosen field, and so, he started on his way to becoming an architect. At first, I was rather sceptical, thinking that he was throwing away greatness for mere competence, but deep inside, I guess I was glad that the only one to bring his... I was glad to be the only one to bring his visions to life, and then he met her. Our painting sessions became few and far between. He no longer needed my help in dealing with his inner demons. I did listen. This, this, this game's too vague for me. Uh, these letters need to have like fucking. They need to have like a name on them. I, I don't know who's talking about who, and I. Uh, I've just lost the plot. I've lost the fucking plot, lads. Oh, this is where I came in. Oh, wait, this where's the door? Come on, Richard. You were always there when I needed you. Let me return the favor. Ah, uh, I don't know, Thomas. What about my work? The university? Richard, I know they kicked you out. I'm guessing you finally managed to piss off the right people. Stay with us, old friend. Do it for me. For them. So, he brought him here. Wonder who he meant by them. The others. He meant the others. So that's how you found him? Yes. He was just lying there. He. Mr. Reckowitz? I'm sorry. He was a friend. I just... need a moment. That's not true, Thomas. You thought he... deserved it. Hmm. Once he got engaged, we grew apart for a while. Now that I think of it, I guess I was jealous. I no longer had him all for myself. 
In time, I warmed up to her as well. She was striking both in her beauty and intellect. Eventually, I accepted the fact that he has found true happiness, true love, strong and pure. Well, as pure as it can be, I guess. In any case, I was no longer needed. When the project came along, the one that would eventually be known as Niwa, Niva, I pulled all my strings to get him what he wanted, even though I knew it would drive him an even bigger wedge between us. I wanted the best for him. He was the closest to a son that I'd ever had. Oi oi, nice. Right, combine. There we go. Now what do we do with that? Oh, the skull beat it. Do the well. How very game gr groundbreaking innovation there. What the fuck? Look at this! Oh, I know why. Because I turned the thing around, didn't I? I was thinking, why the hell can I not get through here? Because she couldn't get through there in the spirit world. See this split screen action? Do you know what it adds to the game? Fuck all. Like, they had this idea of where, oh, this split screen would be amazing. You can do different things, you can collect things in different worlds. Do you know what happens? Absolutely nothing. Because everything I've had to collect in this world has always been from the, the real world. In the spirit world, we, we've, we've done nothing, only activate these memories, which, which like, mate, it's, it's not adding anything to the gameplay. The only thing it's doing is cutting my fucking frame rate in half. Man, this shit is ridiculous, man. Yeah, I'm sorry, but... Before this episode, before I start this episode, I was like googling the reviews and stuff, and... I think I've already mentioned it in a, in a previous episode, that the reviews are shockingly good for what is a very mediocre game. I don't know who had to get paid off to get reviews of this high but this game isn't actually that good it's all right i don't mind playing it but it's a lot poorer than what i thought it was going to be uh, right how do i do this and the funny thing is none of the reviews because I, I watched a few reviews online none of the reviews mentioned the performance of the game which proves to me the complete fucking shills, right? But there was a, there's a few reviews that I found online from independent people that have just said, yeah, the game is in fact pretty bad. There's very little gameplay. It's a pretty much a walking simulator. They said the atmosphere is good at times and the story is quite good when you can actually get access to the story without having to get past the fucking clunky gameplay mechanics in the stupid split screen that halves your frame rate. And these people have got much better rigs than mine. They've got like 2080 Ti's and they're saying like even they, them when they put the game on it has random frame drops and it's it like cuts the frame rate in half when in like split screen like this so even they can't hit this game in 60 frames per second. It's just so badly optimised. Which I think is fucking unacceptable. Right, so, like mate, like I can't even see, the camera is so far away I can't even fucking see what, what's on the screen. Like I need, a I need a full screen of one world so I can see what the fuck I'm doing, like what, wait there, I need to get closer to the fucking screen so I can see what's going on. It's an after joke this, it's like I'm, it's like I'm playing with ants. You know what I mean? Like, is this a door here? It's not a door. Oh, 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 oh great, now the camera changes. Fan titty, fuck me in the arse.
Do we have to do many more of these? Could, could we not have just seen all of this in a cutscene and have done with it? Uncle Richard, my arms are getting tired. You've been drawing me for hours. Almost done. You know, Lily, you remind me of someone. A girl I knew when I was very young. Did you love her? Yes. But a young, innocent love, free of the... ferocity of adult lives. Richard. I'm getting a weird vibe from him. Yeah. There's <laughs> grief, sorrow, and... And rapiness. Something else. Rapiness. I know rapiness when I say it, and Richard's a rapey... <laughs> rapey Dave. Richard's a rapey Dave. Yeah, I don't like him either. Sounds like a cunt. Right, let's go. Oh, look, we can follow shit. See, why am I... What is, what's the point in having this netherworld on the bottom of the screen? It, it's adding nothing. Everything I'm doing is taking part in the fucking proper world. Oh, yes. A doll. See, when I activate a doll, then it should show you what's happening in the netherworld, not have it on all the time. <gasps> Pardon me. Aren't you a bit old to be playing with dolls? Here. I bought it especially for you. Oh, a ribbon? It's beautiful. Thank you, Uncle Richard. Here, let me... Um, on the other hand, why don't you do it yourself? It's like something stirred inside him. Is he? Gi I bet you he's given that kid like his his child lovers ribbon and stuff. Oh, it's disgusting. It's not very nice. Oh, there's the ribbon. Oh, mint! Look, we get to do another one of these mini games. I'm so excited. All I'm doing right is using the left analog stick and rubbing it around the outside until it hits the correct thing no, wow i didn't mean to oh god what have i done it feels cold what have you done what have you done richard Huh. Oh fuck that. Oh look at the frame rate drops. Look I'm getting one frame a second. I had never felt anything so desperate. It was calling out to me. It Don't to show sit. Me Don't sit in the chair, you <gasps> idiot. <laughs> sit in it. Who sits in a ghost wheelchair? Not me. Not me, son. What? Yes, I know. Is that Thomas? No, I need to be sure. There's got to be something around here. You want what? Fuck! Look 
who finally decided to let me out of my cage. And only when you need my help. Surprise. Surprise. Okay, you know what? I'm not in the mood. Just tell me what you see. Come on. Come on. Yes. I can feel it. Okay. It's around here somewhere. Oh, well, that's real fucking specific. Hey, I'm trying to help here. Well, you know, sometimes I wonder. Well, it doesn't make it easier when you keep me in the dark for so long. Oh, Christ. Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> Hell of a way to treat your soulmate. God damn it! There's nothing here! There is. Really? I'm never wrong about these things. You know that. Well, oh, screw this. I should have known better than to listen to you. Wait. What? There. There. Where? What? Yes, I love this guy. Yes. Not this guy. I like. Okay. I like a spiritual doppelganger. What? You building tension? Grab the fucking thing! Do you shut up? <laughs> Like he's obsessed. What is he? What have I done? This is Thomas. This is Thomas. This is the guy that wanted therapy. Yes. It was like a father to me. Richard's done something to him. Fucking bastard! Who could he? I told you we couldn't trust anyone but ourselves. Keep it together. Think. What do we do now? We wait. And when he comes back? Oh, just... Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, tiger. Remember what's at stake here. Just let me do what I do. You better do it fast. Because if you don't, I will kill him. I reckon this is the guy that contacted us. That's how he knew we were a medium as well. But isn't it weird how his doppelganger is it works independent of him, but my doppelganger only does exactly what I say. It's like it's it's literally me in the spiritual world. But this guy is like two different people. Thomas. I wasn't expecting you. Is uh, everything all right, my friend? Did you do it, friend? Did I? What? My daughter. It. My 13-year-old daughter. I entrusted her to you. Sadness, Sadness is a daughter. Did you do it? I... I don't... Uh, uh. The sketchbook. Forced myself to look through it. Cover to cover. 
Every single fucking page! <sighs> Tell me you didn't hurt her, Richard. Thomas, please. Tell me I'm wrong, Richard. Tell me, and I'll let you go. I... It wasn't me. Thomas, you have to understand. There's a sting inside of me. Shut up. Nice one, mate. Fucking what he gets. You have to believe me. I wanted to die. I'll make it quick. It's Richard's shame. The big so demon, I bet you it's his shame. She's my daughter! I never wanted any of this. I, I, I should never have come here. But you did. Uh, 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 no one uh, here. Knowing what she means to me. Uh, Thomas, I, I swear I'll go away. You'll never... Wait, look here. No, let me out. Let me out. Let me in. Oh, what can this guy do? Can this guy... Yeah, not being funny, lads, but the game just stepped up. I'm actually like, this is really interesting. <laughs> this guy's a savage. Oh, so we're actually controlling this guy now. We're controlling Thomas. Free Richard from his demons. Okay. Well, let's just have a look. The game has saved. Yeah, which is good. Okay, lads. Well, I quite like this. I wasn't too sure if I liked the idea of being another character from the girl. But this guy's really interesting. I like how he's just... He's on a revenge mission. I appreciate that. I love a bit of vengeance. Um, okay, lads. Hope you enjoyed the episode. See you in the next one where we'll see what we can do with Thomas and taking down Richard. I don't know what this guy's got planned. Maybe it wasn't Richard that did that to his daughter. Maybe it was something else controlling him. But I wouldn't even take the I wouldn't even take the risk. I'd just kill him. Fuck that bitch. <laughs>